three turns of a screwdriver moves a two inch screw down one eighth of an inch, how many turns to lower the screw 100%? Okay, so hopefully all of you out there know what a screwdriver is. And if you don't, I'll explain uh, what a screwdriver is. It's a pretty common tool. But uh, if you can figure this out and feel free to use a calculator, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Then of course, I'm gonna solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here is the problem. Always get in the habit of reading any math word problem at least three times. Now, I've been doing math word problems for decades, years and years and years. You know, in the beginning, I was uh, not the greatest student. I would just read a problem, just, you know, start doing something. And guess what? I didn't get most of those problems correct. It wasn't until I started developing habits and disciplines. And that's what you need if you are serious about, um, you know, improving in math or being successful in mathematics. You have to develop certain academic habits and reading, taking your time, really, you know, fully assimilating all the information in a problem is critical. So although you understand uh, the scenario, you still kind of want to build, uh, build in a kind of uh, pause, if you will, for your brain to kind of kick in and fully work. So read the problem, make sure you understand the question. So we have this screwdriver again, uh, three turns. If we turn the screwdriver three times, it's going to move this two inch screw down one eighth of an inch. Now, what we're interested in here is how many turns to lower the screw 100%. So that means how many turns is it going to take to move this two inch screw all the way completely uh, flat. So uh, the best thing to do in any problem, okay, particularly a math problem, is to model the information that you have and particularly see if you can visualize the problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at my little diagram here. So here is a screwdriver. It's my depiction of a screwdriver. So Again, for those of you out there that don't know what a screwdriver is, well, I think it's pretty important that you do. That's a very common tool. So here you just grab this thing, you turn it around and around, and then uh, uh, right at the tip, there's various uh, types of screwdrivers and they fit different types of screws, right? So for example, the screw over here, this can have like something like this, and it could be what we call a Phillips uh, uh, type of uh, screw. And of course, you'll need a Phillips uh, screwdriver to fit that type of screw or you might have something like this which is a flathead or common situation now if you don't know what i'm talking about well you might want to consider you know maybe um going to your local uh home depot or lowe's and picking up a screwdriver and screws you know you should be a little bit handy but anyways i'm going to assume all of you out there know what the uh, screwdriver and a screw is okay so it doesn't make a difference, again, what type of screwdriver we're dealing with. But what we, need, what we need to do is interpret this part of the problem. And here is our lovely screw. And if we turn this thing three times, right, one, two, three, it's going to move this two-inch screw down one-eighth of an inch. Because that information we do know. And the question here is how many times are we going to have to turn this thing to uh, lower this screw 100 in other words, we're trying to drive or screw this wood into like, well, screw this uh, screw into like a piece of wood, right? So this is going to go down one eighth of an inch and then we're going to keep going down, down, down. And eventually we're going to get to a situation where the screw is completely flat with whatever uh, material we're driving it into. Okay, so hopefully you understand that situation or understand the problem. And again, you know, it's good just to kind of visualize it. And, you know, this is the way I'm kind of describing it. Uh, but you can, uh, you know, model this in any creative way that you want, as long as you understand it. And a good kind of uh, test to, um, well, one thing you should keep in mind, let me say it this way. It's great that you understand what's going on, but you should always keep in mind that uh, could someone else, okay, uh, interpret 
you know, how you're modeling the problem or how you are expressing the solution. Because if uh, someone else couldn't follow your work, you may want to put in more details or make it clear. That's a good habit to be in just because you understand it. That's great. But it, particularly if you are a student, uh, if your teacher can't understand what you're you know, thinking or the logic behind what you're doing, then you might want to fill in the gaps so it's clear. And if it's not clear, then it's probably not a good mo uh, way to model the problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and think about what uh, we can do here uh, to model the situation. Well, what we need to do is come up with some sort of, uh, you know, pace of how fast, or well, I don't say how fast, but the rate, this is the correct word. I was trying to think of another word. Uh, I guess speed would be a good word, not velocity, but how fast, you know, this uh, screw gets turned into, let's say, or gets uh, driven in to, uh, you know, material like a, um, uh, you know, block of wood or whatever the case is, right? So the key here is that we need to understand this right here, a rate. And a rate in mathematics has a very specific meaning, okay? And this is a huge uh, topic in math, and it goes along with um, the topic rate, ratios, and proportions, okay? Rate ratios and proportions. So this is, uh, you know, math topics that are generally taught, you know, certainly like at the middle school, definitely at the high school level and beyond. And you need to understand what a rate is, okay? And a, a ratio and of course a portion. So what is a rate? Well, effectively a rate and a ratio is nothing more than fraction, okay? It's a fraction and it's basically comparing uh, two different numbers, but really uh, what we're doing here is comparing two different values with different units of measure, okay? Now, let me give you a real quick example of rate, and of course, you can see I'm, I'm setting up a rate for this prom, but uh, one uh, easy example for a rate, and I'll do it down here, would be miles per hour, okay? So if a car goes 60 miles, okay, per one hour, what we're doing here is comparing uh, miles to hours, okay? And this is a fraction, 60 miles per one hour, but miles is distance and hours is time. So the units of measure have nothing to do with one another. And when you have a situation like that, that is called a rate. So here we can set up a rate because we wanna compare turns to how many inches. So turns has nothing to do with distance, but if we compare this, what we can have here is a rate. Now, it doesn't make a difference if we uh, compare turns to uh, inches or distance or distance to turns. That's really not um, you know, too uh, relevant to this particular problem because the uh, answer will work out the same way. But uh, this is what we need to be thinking about, all right? So anytime you're given information where there's some sort of like pace or some sort of speed or some sort of, you know, uh, you know, rate or, or velocity of something going on, you need to be thinking, oh, is this a rate? And uh, if you can express this information as a rate, well, then you're well on your way to solving the problem. Okay, so we're going to uh, come up with a rate of turns per uh, inches or uh, just we're going to uh, compare turns to the distance, which is going to be measured in inches, some sort of fraction that expresses this. So three turns drives down the, uh, the screw one eighth of an inch. We can express that specifically this way. So turns over uh, distance or inches will be three turns uh, per one eighth of an inch. Okay, so this screwdriver and screw situation, uh, three turns of the screwdriver per one eighth of an inch. And notice I am using the word per here, just like uh, miles per hour. Okay, we can express that as mile, miles per hours, or maybe say like gallons per minute. And if you're not familiar with like gallons, that's a unit a measure of volume. Uh, so like, let's say you have some sort of pump, what is the rate of the pump, right? So it's gallons per, that, fra that P is, uh, or that per is the fraction bar per minute. These are our examples of rates. Okay, so three turns per one eighth of an inch, but uh, that's fantastic. I mean, we got this uh, rate set up, but what do we do with it? Well, we can't really do anything or well, there's no real value of expressing this unless we can establish a proportion, okay? And that's what we're gonna do. So when you um, have a problem 
or you detect, oh, look, I have a rate or a ratio, that's a separate discussion, then you need to be thinking proportion. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and explain that right now. All right, so let's just go ahead and get, uh, review the problem again at this point. So we have three turns of a screwdriver. All right, so three turns of a screwdriver moves a two-inch screw. Okay, this part of the problem right here is not uh, important right now. Uh, so let's just kind of, you know, let me kind of uh, continue with my uh, train of thought here. So three turns of a screwdriver uh, moves a two-inch screw down one-eighth of an inch. Okay, so this part right here, we expressed this part as a rate. Okay, now we need to consider this two-inch screw to answer this question right here is how many turns to lower the screw 100%, meaning that we have to move the screw two inches. Okay, so again, kind of have to visualize our problem here. So if this thing is two inches right here, we have to move it all the way down so it's flat, right? So that is the problem. Okay, so now that we understand the question, again, when we um, uh, have a rate or we see a rate situation, we need to set up a proportion. It's almost a you know, perfect giveaway, especially with math problems. If you're a math student, if you detect a rate or a ratio, again, just to be like, okay, this has got to be a proportion problem. So this is the setup to um, solve this problem. Okay, so this is the rate that we already kind of uh, constructed. So three turns per one eighth of an inch. That is the rate of the screwdriver to screw, okay, i.e. how fast we can drive in the screw. But what we want to do here is compare this to another equal fraction because two equal fractions is by definition a proportion. But let's notice here I'm comparing turns to inches. In other words, turns is in the numerator and inches is in the denominator. So I'm going to set up another fraction here. But the fraction I'm going to set up has to have the same units of measure in the same place. In other words, turns in the numerator and inches in the denominator. Okay. All right. So the question is, how many turns? So, well, let me just kind of say it this way. If we have a screwdriver and screw situation such that three turns of the screwdriver moves the screw down one eighth of an inch, how many turns Okay, uh, will it take? All right, to move that screw two inches. Okay, now whatever the answer is, okay, whatever the the rate to do this, it's in proportion of this uh, situation. Okay, so this is how you want to think. I mean, we use this word pretty freely in uh, the English language or any language is uh, proportional, right? So uh, something's in proportion to something else. Well, this is what we're saying. Whatever the proportion is uh, for this it's the same as the proportion for this, i.e. we have two equal fractions. So again, if it takes three turns to move this inch one eight or three turns to move the screw one eighth of an inch, how many turns, X is a variable that represents this unknown, uh, does it take to move the inch, to, uh, move the screw two inches, which of course is the complete uh, distance to flatten the screw or lower the screw 100%. Okay, so hopefully I didn't confuse you too much with this explanation, but if you understand this, well, uh, really what this comes down to is to solve this proportion for this variable X because X represents the number of turns it's going to take to move that screw down two inches. So again, what we have here is a proportion. Okay, so let's kind of strip away the units of measure and a proportion by definition is two equal fractions. We have one fraction, equaling to another fraction. So let's uh, say, for example, if I have one half and it's equal to another fraction that's equal to one half, maybe something like five over 10, right? So this fraction is the same as this fraction. They're equivalent in value. Well, what we can uh, do to um, verify that we have a proportion and to solve proportion problems is to use something called the cross product. In other words, when you have two equal fractions, if you multiply crosswise this way, the uh, products are equal. This is what we call the cross product. So two times five is what? Well, two times five is 10, and that's equal to one times 10, which of course is 10. So again, when you have two equal fractions, i.e. a proportion, the cross product is true. And that is what we're going to be using to solve for this variable X. Now, uh, if you were kind of a little bit lost in the beginning of this problem, Let's see if you have the algebra skills to actually solve for x. So maybe you want to pause the, uh, the video and see if you can do this. 
Real quick, if you want my best math instruction, you definitely got to check out my full courses. Again, you can find links to these in the description of this video, but they span basic math to advanced math and everything in between. Okay, so let's keep going with this problem and don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. And again, we have this lovely proportion and we know uh, why we have it. Here is our rate, three turns for every one eighth of an inch. How many turns for two inches? So it's proportion, two equal fractions. So to solve this thing, all we need to do is apply the cross product. Okay, so we're gonna uh, multiply across this way. So we're gonna have X times one eighth is gonna be one eighth times X. And then three times two, of course, is gonna be uh, three times two. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify this. So 1 8 of an inch or 1 8 X is equal to two times three, which of course is six. How do we solve for X? Pretty easy. All we need to do is multiply both sides of the equation by eight. So eight times 1 8 is one or uh, one X or just X. And then six times eight is 48. But what does X represent? Well, X represents the number of turns, right? that uh, uh, is needed to move the inch, or sorry, move the screw down uh, two inches, right? So that's what uh, X represents. So 48 turns is the right answer. And let's kind of go down here. Let's suppose some of you are like, hey, I'm not so sure that uh, Mr. YouTube math man here is right. Uh, how can we kind of maybe check this? Well, let's think about it. So if it takes three turns to move the uh, screw down uh, one eighth of an inch, uh, let's take the answer, okay? We have 48 turns, okay? And let's just divide it by three, okay? Let's just see how many uh, uh, times, every three turns, how many three turns are we gonna get out of 48 turns, right? So I don't know if I said that right, but effectively, uh, we're gonna get 16. So if we take 48 divided by three, we get 16. So that's 16 times we're gonna move the uh, uh, screwdriver three times, right? So we're gonna do this one, two, three, We'll do this one, two, three, one, two, three, and that'll be 16 times three, which of course is 48, okay? Now, uh, every time, okay, we move the screwdriver, turn the screwdriver rather, three times we move one eighth of an inch. So one eighth of an inch, one eighth of an inch. So what's the total amount? Well, it would be 16 times one eighth, right? So 16 times one eighth of an inch is going to be what? Well, 16 times one eighth is gonna be 16 over eight or two two inches. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. And uh, again, if you are new to math, let's suppose you're just, you know, interested, you know, maybe this prom uh, caught your eye uh, and you're like, yeah, I can figure it out. Again, you know, even if you didn't know about proportions, just reason through it, that is fantastic, okay? Because you should never be, um, you know, uh, never sell yourself short. Let me just say that when it comes to uh, doing a math problem. That's why I never like to say, hey, this is an algebra problem. You need to do this and other thing because, you know, somebody can kind of tinker around with this problem and reason through it. And, and that's that's really the hallmark of, um, you know, of someone who can really learn, you know, any topic. You know, you just, you're not willing, you got to be tenacious. Okay? You, you got to be willing to, you know, uh, if it gets tough to maybe look for other strategies and whatnot. But, you know, the thing with math is the more you know, the more math skills you have, then it's like tools, right? You have more tools to solve, you know, and recognize different type of prompts. Now, if some of you out there are just interested in relearning math, maybe you forgot a lot of mathematics, and you're like, yeah, I used to learn this stuff way back in the good old 1980s, but I forgot all this. Boy, I wish I would be uh, able to kind of remember all this stuff again. Well, check out my course. I'll, of course, you'll find a link to it uh, in the description. It's called a, a Math Skills Rebuilder. A lot of people are taking advantage of, of this course, and it, it is, you know, the course is uh, self-explanatory. It uh, rebuilds your math skills, okay, especially, you know, at the, let's say at the high school level. But I just don't start at the high school level. I start with basic mathematics because a lot of you, uh, you know, kind of need a review in fractions and, you know, decimals and percent, all that kind of good stuff. So I start there and then I uh, teach you a ton of algebra, geometry, trigonometry, probability, statistics. It is a, a very, very well-rounded math education that can serve you in your real life. And of course, if you wanna continue on and build uh, on top of that into more advanced uh, math courses, this course will be an excellent preparation for you. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.